there is a big mystery in the people as to where she came from she was the daughter as you pointed out uh, uh, of stefano manio who was a soldier in hitler's army and hitler had ordered his army to go to uh, and conquer russia so somewhere near the st petersburg he was taken prisoner and there is a small town called vladimir uh, where uh, he was uh, kept for a number of years uh, maybe 4 years 3 years i i don't know uh, hitler was defeated in 1945 and in 2006 uh, sonia gandhi made a special plea and put in uh, he was also from st petersburg he personally took her and showed her the jail where her father was kept so that's the background her mother was um, <clears throat> one of the um youth movements of uh, muslim muslimi so they have a full fascist background and uh, this fascist background has been hidden from the public and especially important because they are attacking all of us as nazis and so on and uh, you know holocaust and blah blah and in fact if there's anyone who has a claim to being a descendant of a political descendant of hitler it is sonia gandhi and uh, her birth certificate uh, does not mention the name sonia uh, it's a name which uh, her father after coming back from uh, russia gave the russian name it's a russian name in fact all three daughters of his got russian names they had different names but he gave them all russian names her birth place was given in parliamentary records as orbasano where their m- mother presently is residing and uh, uh that was our home for a, a long time she was brought up there but she was actually born in a place called luciana which was actually a german rest and recuperation rest and recuperation center and i i am a bit puzzled by it uh, but i don't want to go any further into it because it's going to areas which is not essential then the question comes about her education uh as far as i know the only place education institute she went institution she went was a was a seminary for the christian catholics <coughs> called maria ostelitz uh, something like that and i don't know how many classes she uh, was there and passed how many at what level but uh, she has no college degree and unfortunately in her affidavit uh when she be contested the elections she claimed that she had got a degree from the university of cambridge which cambridge university upon my inquiry gave me a letter denying it which i have published it so i mean this is a very important thing because in employment in government service uh if you have faked your education qualification you are dismissed and even subject to imprisonment and uh, i had gone to the supreme court and the supreme court finally the chief justice uh, balakrishna justice balakrishnan said well now be generous uh, you have proved your point and henceforth she will not in her affidavit say so so if you see her affidavit of 19 uh, 2006 when she fought the by election again after resigning for office of profit matter is different for education qualification from 2014 when i entered parliament in uh, 1974 and it was my first term and then in november i had a question in parliament about insurance agents and uh, it was before the finance minister and mrs gandhi was not present at that time and i asked the question uh, and because the minister then uh, who answered was pranab mukherjee and i asked this question whether uh the insurance agents that you have are selected by any criteria or you can you allow foreigners to and the answer was no foreigners are barred by the uh, foreign exchange regulation act and many other acts and it's only for indians then i said how is it that sonia gandhi is an insurance agent and she is insuring all the people who are officers and employees of the prime minister's office this is a, not only a conflict of interest but it is illegal our whole parliament you know burst into uproar the congress denounced me blah blah everything went on then i said uh, to pranam mukherjee across the aisle that if tomorrow mrs gandhi doesn't come to parliament and say that i have made her resign from these insurance agencies uh, i will go to the tuglak road police station uh, because that's the closest to 
that uh, that covers the race course road uh, or Safdarjang road uh, area. I said, I'll file an FIR against Sonia Gandhi for violating the law and ask her to be taken to custody. So next morning, a red faced Mrs. Gandhi walked in and she gave me a glare that uh, I'll never forget. And she said, for years, some people have been denouncing my family, interfering in our personal affairs, this, that, scream, scream. And then she said, however, I have ordered Sonia Gandhi to resign from all the, uh, the insurance agencies. So that's how that matter began. Later on in the emergency, we found that she was declared as the technical director of Maruti car. Now, she has a person who has not even passed school. How can you be a technical director <laughs> of a motor company? And she was getting a big fat salary also for that. So that was another thing that uh, they, there was an, after the Janata party came to power, we set up an inquiry under Justice Gupta and uh, a big report on Maruti has been prepared. But she was never prosecuted but very, because very soon Congress came and then Congress after that uh, we be saying all these people, they were progressively found nobody having interest um, to prosecute her and, and it, it sort of lapsed. So there again, all these are proved facts that she broke the law and became insurance agent. She broke the law and became Maruti technical director. Now, I also found uh, subsequently in the late, uh, in the early 2000, 2001, that during uh, the period with, uh, when Sonia Gandhi was living with Indira Gandhi, and then later on as the wife of Rajiv Gandhi, she was engaged in uh, antique smuggling and a very, on a very large uh, thing, a lot of time. She, I also found that, and it was published in Hindu newspaper by some uh, correspondent called Vaiju. Uh, something, uh, uh, um, she was a Maharashtrian lady. She was living in Paris, but she had gone specially to Italy. And a place called Rivolta, there was a um, a shop there called Etnica. And uh, in Sonia Gandhi's hometown of Arbasano, uh, there was a shop called Ganapati. Both were stocking ancient antiques from India. So it is smuggled from India brought in there and there they prepared all these, uh, uh, you know, sale deeds and so on. And then uh, uh, auctioned it in London. This is a racket that was going on. I filed a case in Delhi High Court and notice was issued to CBI. And that time uh, there was a, a, a lawyer uh, called, um, uh, who was representing Solicitor General, the additional Solicitor General called Raju Ramachandran, who's very much with them. Uh, he got up and said, the court said, and there was a judge called Patel from Gujarat, he was the Chief Justice and there was uh, another uh, judge, I think he was the grandson of uh, uh, our former president Fakhruddin. Uh, so he, uh, they both of them said, uh, we are asking the CBI to make an investigation of this. Along with this, there was another petition where I said that she according to declassified documents uh, by Yeltsin after the Soviet Union collapsed and it became so many countries, 16 countries. And uh, Yeltsin became the president of what was now, what is now known as Russia or some federation or something. And he had set up a commission on uh, uh, KGB activities during the period of the Soviet Union. And at that time, the Americans had huge influence in uh, in uh, in uh, in Russia because Russians wanted a lot of money they were in a, they were total wrecks so the Americans were there the American advisors were there and what the Americans did is they quietly went into the KGB uh, headquarters and photostatted every document I mean the amount of work that must have gone but the Americans are thorough in these matters every document was photostatted and then they put a copy of each in several libraries. So at Harvard, in a library called Lamont Library, they put a huge, uh, almost one basement full of uh, these records. And of course, all computerized, and you know, you could uh, 
uh, you know, uh, bring it out all on a, in a very efficient basis. And I had, uh, um, uh, you know, a spare time. I used to go every summer, as Jagdish knows very well and Arvind knows very well, and uh, you know, teach for three months and come back. So I had a lot of spare time. So uh, I used to go to the library and then you know start looking around. And uh, one day I said, let me type uh, uh, my no and see what comes out. And uh, Stefano Mino going to jail, all these documents came and uh, records came to show that the KGB was paying Sonia Gandhi uh, for years. And those records I pulled out and uh, filed it in the Delhi High Court. Delhi High Court again sent a notice to uh, the uh, uh, to the government and uh, the uh, and that that was external affairs ministry and Jaswan Singh was the just uh, external affairs ministry and he then called the RAW and uh, asked them to go to Russia and get it. The Russians then said, uh, "You have to come here with an official communication with the government of India." and we will give you all the records. Yes, these records exist. So, uh, Jaswan Singh then put this up to Mr. Vashbhai as usual. Uh, he, he declined. So, we could never pursue that matter. But the letter that Jaswan Singh wrote to, to the Russians asking for these records, I have a copy of it because I was a very good friend of uh, Jaswan Singh, I'm very sorry that we didn't give him a ticket and then an accident happened. He's now, I think, in a, um, in a, a comatose condition. And so, the, here again, we have a situation where records are there and newspapers published all this. The Times of India, the correspondent who published it, when I see her today and say, hey, what happened to that investigation you did? She said, please don't bring it up, don't bring I'll be in trouble. She <laughs> anything to do with it. I think she had a husband who was in UNI. He also put it out, which came in every newspaper. So, that, there was no doubt about it. So, KGB and antique smuggling. Now, these are things on which the Congress got very angry with me and all kinds of things were done. Jaitambaram tried to get me arrested on some hate speech uh, thing, which of course fizzled out because there was no hate speech. I never make hate speech. I say the truth. If I say the Muslims' ancestors are Hindus, I am. I am uh, not. Uh, I am not saying many hate. That means I am including them. I am not like the Nazi Germany who says that Jews are germs. They are. They've got nothing to do with Germans. Uh, I am saying no. You are one of us. How can I be? How can that be hate? But anyway, they tried all this uh, Hindu terror. Everything it was tried, but nothing worked because I have by then become uh, knowledgeable in law. There were other incidents which irked uh, them. In the emergency, uh, after uh, Janata Party was elected to power and uh, Moraji took a uh, oath, between our results coming out and Moraji taking the oath, Sonia Gandhi picked up her two children, got hold of uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi, and both all of them went and hid in the uh, Italian embassy. And uh, one day, it, uh, when Moraji had become Prime Minister, I walked in at an early hours because he usually used to call me at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning uh, to for a meeting. Almost every day I used to go. And I saw Sonia Indira Gandhi coming out and she was in, in, in tears. But of course, she didn't see me. I did. I also sort of stayed away. Uh, and she went. And when I went in, I asked Maharaji Desai, what's the matter? He says that uh, she came here to uh, complain that uh, Sonia has taken away the two children and also Rajiv Gandhi. <laughs> to the Italian embassy and so Moraji made me sit down and he called up the Italian embassy and he said um, something to the effect that uh, uh, you know she's quite safe I mean what's the problem let them I give you my personal guarantee and uh, the Italian ambassadors uh, yeah, I mean Moraji didn't care any protocol or anything he just picked up the phone and called up and the Italian embass ambassador said but she's the Italian citizen so he said so what Rajiv Gandhi is also there and he is a pilot in the Indian Airlines and therefore a government officer and there will be severe pro prosecution of him and disciplinary action if you don't allow him to come out. So that's how they came out. 
I mean, these are episodes which uh, everybody knows. Uh, I know that Priyanka Gandhi's wedding, which took place in, uh, in the late 90s, who uh, who uh, presided over that uh, small rece uh, reception that they had given. They, uh, the, the uh, Ataula lady called Farida Ataula. Everybody knows about who she is. She's got, she's ISI. Now, what was she doing as the chairman or chairperson of the wedding reception for Priyanka Gandhi? In October 1990, October 10th to be exact, uh, Rajiv Gandhi called me and said, are you going to America anytime soon? I said, yeah, I'm planning to leave in another two days for about five, six days. So he says, can you do me a favor? I said, what? Can you stop by Tunis? I said, why Tunis? It's such a small country. What is there? He says, uh, Arafat is there. And Arafat was hiding there after that Shatila massacre in Lebanon. He was hiding there. So he says, I want you to meet Arafat. I said, me meeting Arafat? I am a friend of Israel. He probably knows it too. And if I turn up there, will I be able to come out? He said, no, 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 I have made all the arrangements. So please go. I said, what for? He said, you come and meet me. I'll tell you what for. What he told me was that for years, Sonia Gandhi had been financing the uh, uh, Palestinian Liberation Organization, PLO. And uh, that particularly the George Habash group, which is a Christian group and sending them money. And whether the money was now that he is no more prime minister still reaching, uh, reaching uh, uh, the Palestinians. So that's I asked that question to Arafat. Arafat, of course, was great friend, became great friends. He sat with me, he insisted I have dinner before lunch before going anyway. I came on a private plane from London. So he told me one thing. Yes, yes, money is coming. But why she can't send it to me? Why she must send it directly to George Bush? Now, that is a question later on, I want to know, but it turned out that George Habash, uh, uh, People's Liberation for Palestine, something, PLFP or something, uh, was a Christian organization. So that's why she was sending it there. Now, this is a very serious matter that uh, these are terrorists and you are financing them. National Herald is an outrageous corruption of unimaginable proportions. I mean, it involves criminal misappropriation of property. It involves cheating. Oh, so many charges are there. And one of them is actually uh, life imprisonment, one of the charges. So that's a serious matter. It's going slow because in India, in courts, many things go, especially when there are seven accused and there are seven senior lawyers. I mean, uh, there are thousands of ways it can be delayed. But I have got them. During their period, when they were in office, uh, the magistrate to issue a summons and there's a prima facie case has been proved. Now we have to frame charges and hold a trial and convict them and send them to jail. Dr. Swami, you have to tell us about it. Okay. Okay. You both are with me. You both are with me. You both are so, Vidhi Mantri ke karan Chandra Shekhar sare files mujhe de 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 de. Ki tum Rajiv Gandhi ka dost ho, tum batao kya kare. To, maine jab usko dekha, to do teen baatein pata lagi, jis public ko aaj pata nahi hai, aur aaj bhi file mein hoogi. Ye jo sauda hua tha, us sauda mein, us samay defense minister te kon? VP Singh. Woh Stockholm mein ja kar, वहां से दूर जो हेडक्वार्टर्स है बफोर्स वहां जाकर बैठ कर उसने अप्रूवल दिया वहां दस्तखत भी किया और वही बन गए साधु संत बफोर्स के विरुद्ध में तो पहला यह था दूसरा था कि राजीव गांधी की पत्नी सोनिया गांधी और उनकी बहन की जो पति थे थे मैं कह रहा हूं क्योंकि वो डिवोर्स करके चले गए और वाल्टर विंची और एक और बहन जिसका वो स्पैनिश का आदमी था इन दोनों को पैसा मिली वो थे जब राजीव गांधी वहां दस्तखत करने के लिए गए थे उस समय जो डिफेंस सेक्रेटरी था मिस्टर भार्गवा वो मेरा विद्यार्थी था हार्वर्ड में 
और जब ये सारा हुआ और सब खत्म होने के बाद मैं गया तो वो तो वो तो एक भूत जैसा लग रहा था जो कहते कोई कोई दृश्य देखा इससे जो लोग इन्हीं सारे बाल सब उतर जाते हैं सब पागल हो जाते हैं वैसा था तो मैंने पूछा ये क्यों किया तो तब उसने कहा कि हमें यही था क्यों राजीव गांधी हिम्मत नहीं हुई अपनी बीबी को काबू में रखने के लिए और वो सीधा हमसे डांटती थी और वॉल्टर विंची और इसको देने के लिए और चिदम्बरम का मामा एक थे वहाँ मुतया ए सी मुतया उसको मैंने स्पीक घोटाला में जेल भी भेजा था वो उसने एक ए ई सर्विसेज बनाई और उस ए ई सर्विसेज के जरिए पटोचर को पैसा मिला तो राजीव गांधी को तो पैसा मिला नहीं बट तो वो कोई कहने की बात नहीं है उसके बिना तो हो ही नहीं सकता था उतना तो वो दोषी है ही परंतु जहाँ तक पैसा है वो ये दोनों साला इनको क्या कहते हैं साला ही कहते हैं ना बहन के पति को ये दोनों को उन्होंने पैसा दिया और उन दोनों ने पैसा लेने के बाद डिवोर्स करके चले गए अब ये दोनों बहन जो हैं वो पति के बिना है नाउ देर इज वन क्वेश्चन विच इरिटेट्स कांग्रेस मैन वेरी मच एंड दैट इज आई आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन शी वेंट टू इंग्लैंड एंड इन 1963 and she went to an she didn't know any english so they all the italian girls those days uh, used to go for doing uh, menial work in in england england was much more developed than italy those days and italy had been completely disrupted by the war so um, uh, sonia gandhi by then their parents uh, parents were poor one was a mystery in uh, construction and the other was a, a shell cropper cutting <coughs> cutting the crop and so they she went to england to they get a job and she had to learn english so she went to a, what they call is an english shop you see which exist doesn't exist anymore lenox or something like that and uh, that doesn't exist anymore some bell company has overtaken it now i mean uh, bought it over but she went there for about 6 months to learn english and then she got a job as a waitress in in a, a restaurant in the cambridge university area called variety restaurants or something now then after that rajiv gandhi she was meeting rajiv gandhi she had other friends also but i need not going to that um, after meeting rajiv gandhi rajiv gandhi came to the conclusion that he could not uh, you know get a degree in cambridge he moved to the imperial college of london for to try and get a degree there he didn't get a degree there also and uh, but sonia also moved in around that area in the suburbs of london closer to oxford and uh, where mother of sindhya was studying and then uh, from 63 end to 68 february when she got married where was she working this is a question i asked the congressman what is wrong with that i mean uh, we want to know uh, those who are in political life they that they don't hide anything so if, if what is that so secret about that period and in that i said you know is it something like this is it something like that which uh, you know the congressman get very excited about but the fact is that the congress people should ask sonia gandhi where did you work to uh, sustain yourself because your parents couldn't have sent you money where did you work can she not only the no, uh, parents did not send money she was lending money to rajiv gandhi and that's also part of the court record by the way in the delhi high court uh and uh, there was a uh, this uh, minachi lekhi's uh, i think uh, father um, he was a great lawyer i mean very tough lawyer uh and paka hindutva wadi and he had uh, got all of these papers and he filed it and he had given it to me also so therefore it's a legitimate question what were you doing in london uh we like to know because uh, it's inexplicable that you had um beyond your known means of uh, income you were living in london so we have a right even in income tax laws we have that kind of right you see uh, then she got married in 1968 but till 1983 she remained uh, italian city and uh, her children were born uh, in 1970 and 71 the two children 
they also have been in just in, interred in the register in Italy. I have not been able to get an authenticated copy, but I had a student in Harvard who was an Italian who told me that uh, their names are there, uh, Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi. And they are also in a fact, uh, uh, Italian citizen. Italy doesn't object because they believe in dual, they have dual citizenship. We don't have dual citizenship. If you have any other country's citizenship, you automatically your Indian citizenship is cancelled according to, uh, to uh, Article uh, 9 of the, uh, uh, of the Constitution. So, uh, therefore, this is a very important question because when I got a photostat copy of her, uh, of her um, application to become a, a citizen of India under Section 5, she, um, uh, she, she, there was one mandatory uh, section which said enclose with your application a certificate of renouncing your Italian citizenship. And she has put a cross on it and said not applicable. Now, how, what do you mean by not applicable? Are you a stateless person or what? And so the officers then passed the thing that she can't be given citizenship. Then we have on record uh, Mrs. Gandhi's instruction that this uh, this need not be pressed. It doesn't seem like a very important uh, requirement. Uh, she is an Indian citizen uh, that uh, that should be declared. So that's how her Indian citizenship was declared. She then uh, wanted to go, uh, she wanted to be prime minister. So I wrote a letter that there is another proviso in the constitution which was also amended out by the Vajpayee government before they handed over the uh, uh, the, uh, the power in uh, June in uh, May 21st or whatever of uh, 2014, and that was uh, passed with part, as part of the uh, Apravasi Bharatiya bill, and that was this this proviso which has now been amended but it is unconstitutional to amend it so i can always bring it back if it becomes necessary by going to court uh, that says that any person foreigner becoming a citizen of india will uh, be subject to those conditions upon becoming an indian citizen which are applicable to indians becoming citizens of that country so, what are the restrictions put on Indians becoming Italians? When an Italian wants to become an Indian, we look at what the conditions are imposed on, the, on an Indian who becomes an Italian. And there, you see, you cannot be Prime Minister unless you are born in Italy. <clears throat> and therefore, uh, therefore, she can't be a, a Prime Minister in India because it, there's a reciprocity and you can't become. And this is the letter I wrote to uh, Abdul Kalam. He called me for a meeting on the, uh, uh, he had been trying me, but I was in Madras that time. And then the letter went from Madras, it arrived to on, a, on I think, uh, uh, on seven, 17th of, uh, uh, 70, yeah, 17th uh, of, uh, of May uh, morning. He called me up. I was uh, sit at the lunch, I was sitting down for lunch at my house. And he said, where are you? I said, I'm in Delhi. He says, I've been trying to locate you. I said, I was in Madras. He said, come right now. So I said, uh, in, uh, uh, how soon? Because I've sat down for lunch. He said, forget your lunch. You come within 15 minutes. And my house was not far. So I raced there and I walked in. I saw all kinds of officials sitting uh, with the attorney general. Everybody was there. And he said, you wrote this letter? I said, yes. Will you explain to these people? I explained to them, one of them asked me, have you got any court judgments to say that this is not unconstitutional? There was, there was some Pakistani and the Allahabad High Court had given a judgment that it is constitutional. So everybody satisfied. Then I asked uh, 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 the president, Abdul Kalam, whom I have known a long time. He actually comes, he's a Tamilian who comes from a neighboring district, Ramnathapuram. And I knew him when I was Commerce Minister also, and he, because he was Scientific Advisor at that time, the Defense Ministry. And he has uh, attended many of my conferences that I have called as a minister. So he, uh, I asked him straightforward, but aren't you very late? He said, why? I said, the, the, the TV is scrolling. 
that uh, you have invited her to stake a claim uh, uh, this evening at five o'clock. So, uh, what, what, are, what are we doing? An academic advice, uh, uh, um, you know, exercise. He said, no. Um, the, it is now only um, uh, twelve thirty, and um, five o'clock is a long way off. Uh, so we, I said, but there are presses waiting outside. What do I say? So he said, tell them that the, the president is seized of the material that I've given and he will give a, a, an opinion uh, very soon. And uh, very, uh, very soon means at three o'clock, he sent the letter to Sonia Gandhi's house. And I know two witnesses who were there, senior Congress officials, uh, congressmen, uh, been uh, ministers, uh, and uh, and uh, so they were both there. I think uh, one of them I can name was Manmohan Singh, and uh, the other one uh, I will not name. And they both, uh, they, Manmohan Singh never said anything to me later on, but the other man whose name I'm keeping confidential did not, uh, you know, did tell me what happened. Then a letter went from from uh, Abdul Kalam to her saying, I had invited you to stake a claim today. But I have received a complaint from so and so, and I'm going to refer this to the Election Commission and uh, under uh, uh, Article 91 or something, one of the articles, uh, and also to the Supreme Court uh, for an opinion whether the point I've taken is valid. Till then, I cannot give you, uh, I cannot invite you to form the government, but if you are still keen on uh, forming a government, uh, then come tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So the 5 p.m. meeting stands cancelled. These are all on record. That letter Manmohan Singh read in the meeting at 5 o'clock. But he only read the last line. That if, uh, uh, if you are, uh, if you are uh, anxious to meet me for forming the government, come at 10 a.m. tomorrow. But he didn't read the other part of the text. Obviously he could not. And of course there was being angama on the parliamentary party and all that. And next morning, she went uh, with Manmohan Singh and kept him sitting in the uh, uh, the other room. And uh, there was a big blow up between her and uh, Abdul Kalam, who, according to eyewitness, a uh, person who held a very senior position in Anna University, where Abdul Kalam used to very often go and stay there and also give lectures. Uh, so he was there, and I won't name him also, he, but he's alive. Uh, so he uh, um, uh, heard the whole thing and then Abdul Kalam in fact had a evidence which was provided by RAW that she still had an Italian passport. So therefore he told her that the best thing for you to do is uh, you know find somebody competent uh, who will listen to you and I will swear him in. And that's how Manmohan Singh was chosen but his swearing in was fixed at 20. Uh, on 21st May. Why? Because the support papers which are necessary to show you have majority was all sent in the name of Sonia Gandhi. And there were about 340 names, they're all opposition parties, everybody who were in, were in favor of Congress and against the BJP, they all had sent individually letters. I so and so uh, hereby uh, proposed the name of Sonia Gandhi for Prime Minister and from Raiburelli, Sonia Gandhi had also written I hereby propose the name of Sonia Gandhi for the Prime Ministership of India, signed Sonia Gandhi. So, uh, therefore, all this talk that she never wanted it and all that, it was total bakwas and it was a, uh, it's a, you know, one of these false propagandas to create an image. And these are records which are available. And uh, I know one party which, uh, which had sent uh, a support to the president saying we support the formation of a government by the Congress party. And Sonia Gandhi phoned up one of the leading lights of that party and said, no, 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 there will be misunderstanding. Some of my party colleagues are not to be trusted. So you give me a letter again saying my, putting my name in it. So there's no question whatsoever that she wanted to be prime minister and she was denied it. Now, why 
why make such all this drama that your mother Theresa or somebody like that you are you know sacrifice a noble sacrifice and all this propaganda has been going on for such a long time it's all total rubbish so what i am saying today is that in my opinion she is unfit to lead this country and i'm glad i stopped her she can never become prime minister of india because she has this restriction to and the, she, her connections are all over the world in 1995 she went to china i know all about that visit because i had gone to china subsequently the chinese regard me as friends so since whatever i learned there as a friend i can't make it public but the issue is if it ever becomes a national security issue i'll make that public too so what i am concerned is about national security and i have nothing personal against any of them